Hi and welcome. Today we're going to talk about the Mullins effect and specifically what the different material parameters in the Mullins effect model that is available in all finite element programs virtually, what they really do, what they mean, and how you can then use that information to come up with an experimental test program to help you determine these parameters in the best way. So the Mullins effect, as you may recall, has three parameters, R, M, and beta. And here is the screenshot from the ANSYS manuals describing these. It's very little information here, but if you click on the theory manual, it has all kinds of equations for what this uh, material model is all about. Um, but it can be a little bit hard, perhaps, to understand what these equations are all about and how you use them. So therefore, I'm going to show you uh, by a case study and a parametric study how you can think about these things and how they really work. And you will see that it's very easy to understand that once you do a, like a, a little parametric study of it. So to do that, I will use the M calibration software from our company, Polymer FEM. And uh, I'll start by setting up a virtual test case. I'm gonna take a piece of virtual material, I'm gonna pull it to about 50% strain, I'm gonna unload it and then load it again. So you get loading and unloading in the uh, test cycle in order to see what the material model will respond like. So clicking on the plus sign, switching to virtual experiment. I'm going to add a segment. I'm going to do engineering strain rate to say 30% strain seems reasonable. Then I'm going to unload with a negative strain rate until I get to 10% strain. And then I'm going to reload with the same strain rate to 50% strain. I'm going to call this load case load, unload, reload. So here is my test case. We now have to select our material model that we want to analyze here and demonstrate. So I'm going to click on Set Material Model. I'm going to use the ANSYS Hyperelastic Mullins Model. We have a number of different hyperelastic options here. I'm going to pick one of the easiest ones so we don't get confused on some of the hyperelastic parameters. Uh, so you're going to see a Neohookian here. And here you can see that this material model has a shear modulus, a compressibility parameter D, and then these three Mullins parameters, R, M, and Beta. Let's run this once and see that this is what it looks like. Uh, I can plot on the right-hand side here. I'm going to plot stress versus time. So you go up, unloads, and reload. And there's very little damage during the first uh, unloading here. Like The unloading response is a little different than the first uh, loading part. But then when we reload, we follow exactly the same path up again. So that's how this type of a Mullins effect model works, as we have perhaps seen in the past. Um, now, let's explore what these parameters do. So I'm going to use the parametric study feature in M calibration. So once I click on that, you'll see that there is a number of a table on the left with a number of parameters, and there's a graph on the right. Um, the graph here on the right has the same units and same uh, structure as in the main window. And the, the parameters in this table in the medium value have the same parameters that we had in the main table two in the main window. So click evaluate here. Uh, we get a number of different graphs we can look at and that will help us understand how this works. So by default, uh, the medium value is the same as there was in the main window and then it picks a lower value that's 10% lower and a value that's 10% higher. So the parameter mu is simply the modulus or the stiffness of the material and we can see that the green curve is what we had in the main window. If we increase mu by 10%, we get the blue one. If we reduce it, we get the red one. So that's no surprise. It's just the stiffness. We can also now start looking at other parameters by clicking on this uh, uh, drop-down menu in the lower right corner. I'm going to switch to the R parameter. So the R parameter looks like it's not doing very much. If you zoom in a little bit, you'll see that there is a little bit of influence of this R parameter here. I'm going to unzoom by right-clicking and reset it. Um, and the, the reason why we don't see so much difference here is because these are only 10% difference. We want to change these values a little bit to better explore what these parameters do. So I'm going to do that here by picking our value of, say, 1.1, 2, and 3. And I'm also going to change the M values a little bit, 0 0.1, 1, and four. And I'll keep the, how about we change the beta value, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, 0 0.05, 0 0.06, 0 0.07, 0 0.08, 0 0.09, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0.12,
0 0.05, 0 0.02. 0 0.2, perhaps. Now I'm going to run this again. And now it updates the graph for us. We can look at these parameters again. The M parameters, the mu parameter is, is not that interesting, so we're not going to focus on that. But the R parameters is very interesting. But perhaps even more so initially is the M parameter. So you look at M here now uh, in the graph. So understand what this graph is showing. If for all three lines here, mu is 1, r is 2, and beta is 0 0.05. So the only difference between these three lines is the m value, which is listed in this uh, legend here. So the m value looks like it influenced the magnitude of the Mullins damage, but that's actually not what it's doing. It only changes the rate at which it starts to un unload it. The magnitude is coming from the r parameter. So we can see that by exploring this a little bit more. So that having a small m value makes this drop more rapid during unloading. So I'm going to go 0 0.05. And then here I'm going to do 0 0.1. And then this one will do 0 0.15. Let's rerun this one. We'll see that now we see these changes, but they kind of tend to converge towards the end here, and that the value they converge towards is given by the R value, which in this case is two. So a value of two means that it drops about to half of what it initially was. So we can, ex we can demonstrate this even more by making the M value even smaller. So I'm going to make this 0 0.01, 0 0.02, and 0 0.0. 0.03. If I run these, they're going to drop even faster. But you see that they, they end up at the same point, same line at the end. If we now change to the R value, we'll see that with these values, mu is equal to 1, m is 0.02, and beta is 0.05, the R value is directly corresponding to how far it drops. And the M value is how rapidly it initially drops. So that's how R and M influence the results here. How about the beta parameter? See, the beta parameter has a little bit to do with this slope as well as we can see. A little bit of, it dampens it up. A large beta value dampens out this initial drop. It's more of a parameter for uh, numerical stability, actually, the way it's implemented. But the, for calibration purposes, uh, I would typically focus on the R parameter for the magnitude of the drop, and then the M parameter for how fast it drops uh, to that. So the trick we can see here, and then we can try to understand how to use this in experimental testing and try to evaluate this experimentally. The challenge we have is that if the M value is large, then you can't really determine what the R value is, because then you don't know if it's reaching steady state or not. How far will the damage go? And that's why it's useful to, to test this in such a way that you load, you unload, and then you reload again. And you can do that for multiple strain magnitudes. If you repeat that at different strain magnitudes, you may be able to better map out the plateau level of the, which the the damage is trying to aim for. So that's the R value. So that's uh, that's the two parameters that I would focus on. I will keep a small beta value. I will uh, pick M from the unloading slope and R from the final value of, of the data that you have experimentally. Um, so those are the key features of the Mullins effect model. There's, of course, one challenge left that I'm going to just mention here and then we'll stop, and that is just because you have a material that goes up here and then follows a different path during unloading does not mean it's the Mullins damage. It could be simply viscoelastic relaxation. So it's important to distinguish between viscoelastic relaxation and this type of damage that occurs in a rubber material. And you can distinguish the two by doing repeated cycles. So if you load, unload, reload, unload, reload, if you do a number of those cycles, you will see that if you have hysteresis under repeated cycles like that, then it's a viscoelastic effect. And if you have mainly a nonlinear elastic response, then it's a damage behavior. Typically, 
In real rubbers, you will have a little bit of both. So then you have to have additional data to distinguish what is what in your calibration. The point here, though, is that you can use M-calibration very rapidly to understand what these parameters do, and they will help you uh, understand uh, the calibration that you need to do. But also, as I talked about, what are the experiments that are required to distinguish between these different domains of behaviors that occur in this material? If you have any questions, ask them in the window below. Thank you.